Hey guys, so in today's video, I am doing the first interior upgrade to our Discovery Sport, and that is fitting an Apple CarPlay interface into this screen. Um, it's not going to be changing the head unit itself. It's just gonna be a system that plugs into the head unit, piggybacks off of the video, and allows you to hold in the home button and switch across to the Apple CarPlay interface. The main reason we wanted to do this upgrade is because the current navigation system on the vehicle is very outdated. It lacks features such as lane positioning, live traffic updates and speed camera warnings, all of which were features that you can use on a daily basis to make your drive a lot less stressful. So we will have to dismantle the centre console to be able to install this. Now before starting I do highly recommend disconnecting the battery because you do have to unplug some parts on the vehicle and you don't want to cause yourself any engine management lights or any faults on the vehicle. We'll be starting with the trim that surrounds the cup holders and gear selector. My vehicle is an automatic so this stage may be slightly different if you have a manual vehicle. To remove this section you just have to apply a lot of force and pull the trim upwards. I then disconnect my electric handbrake and gear selector. I now need to remove the trim and framework either side of the centre console. I then move around to the passenger side of the dashboard. I start to remove the trim and framework here so that I can remove the front padding. This will give me access to a few screws that are higher up than the side of the centre console's trim. The front padding is also held on by a screw on the right hand side. So be sure to remove this screw before pulling this panel off. Now move back around to the driver's side to remove this screw so we can remove this bit of padding on the left hand side of the steering wheel. From this point it's just a matter of removing the screws that hold the trim on either side of the head unit. I can now pull the silver trim away, but I have to be careful because it is still screwed in at the bottom. Now that these two trims are out of the way, I can access the four screws that hold my AC control panel in place. There are a few connectors that just need to be pulled out from the back of the AC control panel, and then we can remove the two screws that hold the head unit in place. Now unfortunately I wasn't supplied with an installation guard, but luckily for me these cables were labelled so it was easy enough to figure out which cable plugged into each position. So the new harness literally just piggybacks off the current one in the vehicle. It looks as if it shouldn't fit, but with a bit of force it does go into position. Just be careful you don't bend any of the pins.
this is just a box that runs all the cables to there um, so you unplug that from there and then put this one in between and then all these cables just connect in the places where, where it's obvious um, like that one will go on there and then we've got a microphone which is this here um, I will tape that double side tape it into position somewhere I'm um, hidden out for you um, and then we've got the CarPlay USB and the standard USB although I'm not too sure if I'm going to bother to keep the standard one I just keep the CarPlay one. We also have to connect the original video feed into the CarPlay unit and then the screen will also need to be plugged into this unit. At this point I then reconnected the vehicle's gear selector and reconnected the vehicle's battery again. This put me in a position where I can now test the unit and just ensure everything is working correctly before I put it all back together. I found out that I actually lost some of the original features on my unit so I had to go back to the CarPlay unit and change some of the channels on here um, to get these features back. Unfortunately for me it was trial and error because I didn't have an instructions manual but I managed to find one and I'm going to put it here so that you guys can see and see what channels you need to turn on and off to make your life a lot easier. The most stressful part for me was trying to position the new harness so that it didn't stop the original head unit from going back into position. But with a bit of force I was able to get it all in and tuck the Apple CarPlay unit underneath the original head unit. I now just had to put all the trim back in place on the vehicle and then I was finished with the installation. The trim is now all back in place and I fed my USB cable to come out by the gear selector so I could always put my phone in the tray below the AC panel. Okay, so the system is now installed. Now to be able to use it, we're going to be connecting it via USB. Um, we're using an iPhone. You can also use an Android on the system. So we're just plugging it in now with the lightning connector and it's going to switch the screen across automatically. Now for some reason, unfortunately, it doesn't switch to the video if you put it in reverse, which is a bit frustrating. So you do, if I put it back in park and I hold the home button, you do get your reverse camera pop up um, once you hold in the home button. But perhaps the best way to overcome this is fitting a third party camera. So if you don't have a reverse camera already fitted, this is a way you can get around it. Um, there are video inputs into this device, um, as you saw when I was installing it. But for me, it's just gonna be a case of um, just holding in the home button for now. I will look into installing a third party reverse camera. I don't know what ones to get just yet. So if we head over to the head unit, we hold in the home button, we get this screen here. Now this screen is the screen in which when we plug our phone in, it's gonna automatically pop up across to there. It does take a few seconds as a delay. Um, the screen's pretty responsive. So all in all, the biggest downside to this system is that it overrides the inbuilt one. That does make using some of the features a bit more difficult, but if you're willing to overlook this like I have, it's still a great product, the pros definitely outweigh the cons, but it's quite an expensive outlay that won't add any value to your vehicle. So guys, if you did find this video useful, please do... So guys, if you did find this video useful, please do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video.